Hello everyone, this is Firoz Nadav. I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to teach you about stress strain curve of steel, which are employed in RCC, which are used in RCC structures. Uh, we, we will also see why it is important to study the stress strain curve. So, in order to understand the behavior of, of RCC, we need to study the behavior of the material. What are the materials that are used in RCC? So RCC is a composite structure, it's a composite material. It consists of concrete and steel. Concrete and steel. And in order to understand the behavior of RCC, we are required to understand the behavior of concrete and steel. So the best way to understand the behavior of any material for that matter is to study the stress strain curve. And you see the concrete is employed in RCC to take the compression because concrete is very good in compression. And since concrete is weak in tension, we are employing steel to take care of tension. So when we are studying the stress strain curve of material, we need to study the stress strain of curve of concrete under compression and stress strain curve of steel under tension because that is what they are subjected to. In RCC, the concrete is subjected to compression and steel is subjected to tension. With regards to stress strain curve of concrete, I already made one YouTube video. I will share the link of that video in the description box. Uh, that video is not in great detail but it shares you something about stress strain curve of concrete and what IS 456-2000 code recommends with respect to stress strain curve of concrete. When we come to steel, we have different grades of steels that are employed in RCC structures. The common grades of steel that are employed in RCC structures are FE 250, FE 415, and FE 500. FE 500. FE 250 is the mild steel. FE 415 and FE 500 are the HYST bar. High yielding strength deformed bars. Now, uh, what is this number? 250, 415, 500. 250 is the characteristic strength of the steel. So it is Fy equal to 250. It is nothing but the characteristic strength of the steel, the mild steel. Similarly, 415 and 500 are the characteristic strength of HYST bars. Now we will see stress strain curve for mild steel. So the stress strain curve for mild steel is initially characterized by a, an elastic portion, an elastic range. It will be a straight line from O to A, then B point will come and this B point will be followed by a yield plateau. I will tell you what is the meaning of yield plateau. Then this yield plateau will be followed by strain hardening range and then there will be descending branch until fracture occurs, until fracture occurs. So this, this range is known as strain hardening range, strain hardening range. Now see there are some important points that we need to note. This point here, this point is known as FU, ultimate stress. Point A is the upper yield point, point A is the upper yield point. yield point and point B is lower yield point, lower yield point. Now you see with, with regards to mild steel, we have learned that mild steel has a definite yield point. It has a definite yield point. But here we are confronted with two yield points, upper yield point and lower yield point. The question here is, 
which is the definite yield point out of these two and why so you see many of the researchers have commented on upper yield point and lower yield point and the conclusion of this is reported in a very famous internationally recommended book uh, that is reinforced cement concrete sorry reinforced concrete structures reinforced concrete structure by r park and t paulet and they say in page number 38 sorry in page number 38 they say in page 38 they say that the what causes upper yield point and the lower yield point the upper yield point depends on three factors the speed of the testing on what speed the testing has been done on the specimen speed of the testing it depends on the shape of the specimen before the testing what was the shape of the specimen shape of the specimen and then it depends on form of the specimen form of the specimen what happens to the specimen after testing and we can say that the upper yield point is not a uh, fixed point it varies it depends on these three factors and we can conclude by looking at these three factors that upper yield point varies whereas lower yield point lower yield point as per these authors lower yield point depicts lower yield point depicts the real characteristic of the material the real characteristic of the material means they say this is the real yield point this is what we have to take it as a yield point it depicts the real characteristic of the material and we can say that this b does not vary b point is a definite yield point and one the other reason to look it as the definite yield point is that it is followed by yield plateau and there is a clear yielding after point b clear pure yielding what is yielding yielding is deformation deformation of the material under constant stress under constant stress so the stress is constant at this point the stress is constant but the strain is increasing so we can conclude that there is a clear deformation at constant stress so b point is considered as the definite yield point for mild steel and it is denoted by fy this is typical stress strain curve for hyst bars and it's very different from that of mild steel in mild steel what you have you have an yield plateau an yield plateau indicates that there is definite yield point in mild steel but here you see there is clear absence of yield plateau absence of yield plateau due to this we cannot define a definite yield point definite yield point is not there in hyst bar now we have to see how to ascertain the yield point in the absence of yield plateau so the researchers have done cold working on hyst bar cold working on hyst bar so what is the meaning of cold working cold working means loading of the specimen then unloading loading of the specimen then unloading so when the specimen was subjected to loading so this is the curve that you see and when it was subjected to unloading what happened to the specimen it went down the stress strain curve went down from this point and it parallelly followed the initial straight line or initial line you can say oa it parallelly followed this line and it meet at this point so it meet at strain value 0.002 so this is where you can take 
the definite yield point here the stress will be f1 now you see what is this this is the residual strain present in the hyst bus residual strain present in the hyst bus now you see the stress is zero at zero stress you are getting some strain and that strain is nothing but residual strain so it is present in the hyst bus when you get you do some you have to do some cold working on hyst bus now we will see something related to young's modulus of steel the the value of young's modulus of steel is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square now you see uh, the value of young's modulus for steel it remains constant irrespective of the grades so whatever grades that you are talking about the value of young's modulus remains same so why it is so that we need to see here when i draw the stress strain curve of mild steel it will be like this it will be like this okay then it will be followed by stress a uh, strain hardening range if i overlap the stress strain curve for hysd bus it will be like this I will take different colors it will be like this okay if I just increase the grade of uh, uh, steel so I will get more ultimate stress okay so the point is that the initial elastic range is same for all the grades of steel you can see the il initial elastic range or initial linear range is same for all the grades of steel and what is young's modulus young's modulus is nothing but slope to the initial elastic range so this is the initial elastic range and young's modulus is nothing but slope to the initial elastic range so this is stress and this is strain e equal to stress by strain since the initial elastic range is common for all the grades of steel so that is why the value of Young's modulus remains constant. It is 2 into 10 to the power 5 irrespective of grades of steel. Okay, when we are dealing with design of RCC structures, design of RCC structures, with respect to steel, we have to take design stress. Design stress. Now you see you have different different stress. Uh, you can take that from stress strain curve you have fu what is fu fu is ultimate stress then you have fy fy is the characteristic strength so it depends on the grade of steel for 250 fy values 250 for 415 fy values 415 and for 500 it is 500 now you see when we are designing the structures by using limit state method fy value cannot be taken as fy why so in limit state method we are required to take the partial safety factor for the material partial safety factor for the material for concrete it is 1.5 and for steel it is 1.15 so when you take the when you consider the partial safety factor the fy value is reduced and that reduction so whatever value you get at the end that is design stress or design strength you can say so what value you get fy divided by 1.15 equal to 0.87 fy so this is the design uh, stress that you take when you are designing the rcc structures so thank you uh, very much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it I hope that you liked it and I hope that you have learned some new stuff from this video. Uh, thank you very much.